Tension for Blackburn Rovers switches to Fleetwood this weekend as they try to beat them for the first time in their history. Talk about that match and much, much more on today's show. That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview, bigging up the big, massive, the next big game for Blackburn Rovers, the next cup final, which is Fleetwood Town away. Now, before I jump into it, I know I keep going on about it, but if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. It is now getting to a crucial part of the season. We're past the halfway mark. It's all downhill from here. Now we still have a lot to do. Last weekend we disposed of second place Shrews people who are still stuck in third place. So now we need to edge closer to that second spot, maybe even get it ourselves this weekend. And anyway, let's just talk about the match this weekend. It is Fleetwood Town at Highbury Stadium, Saturday, 20th of January, 2018. Last season, this is the, like, an interesting statistic, Fleetwood Town finished fourth. Um, the current top goal scorer is Devante Cole with 12 goals. And the man pulling the strings, former Wigan manager, Uwe Rosler. So over the years, the two sides have met two times. Uh, and Rovers have yet to beat them. That's a crucial, another crucial statistic. What I did mention just a moment earlier is, that, is the fact that they did finish fourth place last season. Unfortunately, they stumbled in the playoffs and could not get themselves promoted. So I feel they've got a lot left in the tank and I don't expect them to finish below the top 10. And I think they could, uh, if they get a result this weekend, when I don't really want them to, but I, I can still see them getting themselves in and about the playoff picture. So the two sides, Fleetwood Town and Blackburn Rovers, have only met on two occasions. Last time out was the league match, which ended in a draw. And before that was in the Checker Trade Cup. I think it was last season. Uh, this is actually considered as Blackburn Rovers under-23s. They took on Fleetwood Town uh, and they lost 1-0. So a lot to play for. Uh, hopefully, hopefully Blackburn Rovers can get some points. Anyway, here is my starting 11 for uh, the host. Who is my starting 11 for the host? Neil. Coyle, Bolger, Pond, Bell, Diagorara, Schwabel, Dempsey, Madden, Cole, and Hunter. Let's take a look at the statistics over the season. Top goal scorer is Devante Cole with 12 goals. Jordi Hawalia with 10 goals. Uh, Hunter's there with 5, and Burns has got 4. Uh, as for the discipline, Bolger's got 9 yellows. Dempsey's got 6. East Ham's got 5. O'Neill has got 5. As for the Reds, 4 guys have got, at least 4 guys have got a, a red card to the name. Burns, Dempsey, Coyle and O'Neill. Let's take a look at the past five fixtures for Fleetwood Town. Uh, they Last time out, they beat Southend United at their place, something that Rovers could not do. Uh, before that, they won in the Checker Trade Trophy. Uh, I think they're now into deep into the knockout stages, so they might have a Wembley trip on their hands. Before that, this was a, this was a biggie, a 0-0 draw with former Premier League champions Leicester City. In fact, uh, depending on when this video comes out, which is more than likely going to be after the fact, but Fleetwood Town do play uh, Leicester City in the replay, so a lot of a lot of names and players will be involved in that game. So that might work into Rovers' uh, it, uh, Rovers' hands. Uh, before that, they took on Bradford City and they lost at home to one. And way back on set, uh, Saturday, 30th of December, they took on Berry and they won two 0 at their ground. As for Rovers, this is how I feel they will start the match. Ryer in goal, Nayimbi, Downing, Mulgrew, Williams, Dak, Smallwood, Bennett, Conway, Armstrong and Graham. Obviously, one of the major talking points of the last match against Shrewsbury was the, the new formation in the middle, or the new partnership in the middle of Bennett and Smallwood. Obviously, Smallwood, one of the first names, in my eyes, probably the first name on the team sheet, uh, alongside his new uh, uh, partner, in, partner in crime, Elliot Bennett, who has usually been preferred to on the wing as a... Uh, Due to injury crisis with Whittingham, Evans, and maybe the lack of faith a little bit towards Tomlinson, uh, Bennett got the nod, and he was fantastic. So I don't see that changing. It does offer something a little bit different in the middle of the park, and maybe, just maybe, there was rumours circulate in Ewood Park about the return of Jason Lowe, but maybe, just maybe, the uh, the resurgence or the, 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 the understanding of these two might have kiboshed that deal Conway was fantastic. Nayimbi was fantastic. 
The only change I see is Armstrong starting ahead of Samuel. He was a bit rapid when he came on and I thought I was really excited. There is some news of some transfers that are coming in at Ewood Park. Uh, at least one for the time being, Jack Payne, has come in on loan from Huddersfield Town. He was on loan at Oxford, uh, Oxford United. We'll talk more about that transfer a little later on in the show. But uh, exciting times. There might be some more uh, as the week progresses. Let's take a look at the statistics for Blackburn Rovers. Look at this. Top of the pops. Charlie Mulgrew is top of the pops with 11 goals. Well, not necessarily top of the pops. He's joint top with Bradley Dack, who's also got 11 goals. Danny Graham's got nine and Dominic Samuel's got eight. So it's a bit of a scrap now for who's going to be top goal scorer for Blackburn Rovers. Deep into the discipline now. Smallwood's got nine yards. Bennett's got six. Williams has got six. Evans has fives. Into the Reds. Bennett's... Top of this table, he does not want to be there. Two reds, one for Samuel, one for Wharton, and one for Harper, who has since returned to West Brom. As for the last five games, Rovers looked like this last time out. Massive, massive victory. 3-1 win over Shrewsbury Town. Before that, we stumbled to a defeat, a first defeat in a long, long time, when we lost to Hull City in the FA Cup. Before that, it was a 1-1 draw uh, against Rotherham United. Before that, a, a, a scrappy yet effective 2-2 draw against Comfort United. And all the way back to Boxing Day, Tuesday, 26th of December, Rovers 2-0 winners over Rochdale. So a little bit of a bonus talking head session for you today. Not the gaffer, but the skipper. Here he is talking about the result against Shrewsbury Town and also looking forward to the rest of the season. Yeah, it was a good win. Um, it's three points that were massive today. We knew before the game that um, it wasn't going to make or break a season, but we knew how big it was and and uh, how much closer with the brought us to Shrewsbury, so um, credit to the lads, I thought they were great today and a uh, great result for us. Yeah, I think, I think everybody was up for it, I think you could see that, I think uh, the two midfielders I thought were, were brilliant um, in front of us and, and everybody just seemed to uh, win their battles today and, and um, it's a great attitude and if we continue playing like that then, then we won't be far away. Yeah, you could just feel it in the changing room. Um, it's been a lot like that this year, so we need to keep it going and, and produce another 20 of them and, uh, and I think, as I said, we won't be far away, but the credit goes to the boys and uh, the manager for having a great game, game plan and, and um, for the boys to, to battle through like that and, and uh, magnificent. Yeah, it's good. Um, that gives a lift, but really there's a long way to go and they wanted to continue and they wanted to sit back and we thought their penalty was a bit harsh. I don't know if it's uh, been seen again, but I was right next to it and I have got the Get two hands on the ball for me, um, but it's one of the things you need to pick yourself up and go again. And, and we did that second half, we, we battled away again, a wee sticky spell at the start, and then we came through. Um, and goals changed games, and, and uh, we were happy that we got them. Yeah, you just keep thinking we're due ones, you know what I mean? You're, you're hoping that he, he, the referee just gives us something, and um, didn't know what he wanted to give us the pen, but we got it, and uh, thankfully we, we went two, two goals in front. and. Um, battled away well after that. Gives you a bit, a bit of a cushion, aye, but you still know there's a long way to go and goals can change games and I think the attitude of the boys after that was brilliant and the, the boys that came on were brilliant, Adam and to make his debut and uh, Big Joe put his cell about again and uh, we're delighted with that. Um, I just seen the keeper move early and I put it on that side. Um, one of the things, I mean, each each pen as it comes, forget what I've done before and, 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 and look forward and uh, I know there was a lot of a lot of kind of pressure on it and it was up to me to step up and take responsibility and thankfully I scored. Yeah it is and I'm happy, I'm happy I scored goals. But I've said before that it's about us just clean, keep clean sheets as well and take a lot of pride in that as well so um, as long as much as I'm scoring I'm happy with but it's about the team and about winning games. Yeah we've got to take a lot of confidence but quickly move on and look to the next match. Um, what's happened has happened, it's done, we'll be happy tonight but then right away again tomorrow and Monday we'll look to prepare for the next match and that's the way it's got to be for 20 more games. It's a good group, a really good group of players, It's uh, everybody works hard, everybody's um, on, the, on the same wavelength as far as uh, working hard and, and um, working for the team and being team players so um, it's a really good changing room and um, we all know we've done nothing yet and we'll move on to the next match. Um, yeah, I'm meeting her tonight again just to... <laughs> <laughs> No, I think I'll need to meet her every Thursday if that's the way we're gonna that's the results we're gonna get in performances, but no, hopefully that's but a smile on Clara's face for tomorrow. So what did the fans say? This is a transfer special. What's been going on on social media? Well, first and foremost, just want to say Jack Payne, I mentioned it earlier, has arrived at Ewood Park on loan till the end of the season. Bit of a, a creative option for Rovers. Uh, in the style of Bradley Dack and, and similar to maybe Armstrong, less 
less of a forward but more of a midfield player but just gives us options and just think just think when Harry Chapman is fit the likes of Chapman Payne Armstrong and Bradley Dak all you know available to Tony Mowbray it just gives us some uh, creative threat and hopefully it's it's enough hopefully now after that result against Shrewsbury we can start start turning the screw and and and, and taking over taking over this division you know, Wigan have, have been okay. They've, they obviously they destroyed Oxford. That result is still lingering around. But they've not been dynamic. They've not really gripped a hold of the league and ran away with it. They're, they are still five points clear of us, but they're only three points clear of Shrewsbury. So depending on what goes on this weekend, it could be a right old shuffle of the top, top end of the table. But anyway, what the fans have been saying about the Payne deal. Uh, Chris Walsh said this. One thing I don't get with Payne coming in alone, he was playing every week at Oxford. Not exactly the worst team in the league. So it makes makes you wonder why Huddersfield would recall him and send him to us with the point with the potential of less playing time unless the move comes with an option of a permanent transfer in the summer question mark either way I'm happy he's coming in just a weird one on Huddersfield's part to be honest Karam Karabara said this very good signing in pain shame it's only a loan pacey striker tick Dak like backup tick downing permanent tick so much value added this window and it's only halfway through. Full credit where it's due to Mowbray. Meanwhile, Darren Carl Roberts said this. Armstrong, Graham, Samuel, Sexy Swede, Payne, Dak and Chapman. Now that's some firepower. I agree. Completely forgot about that. We had Ant Antonison, but uh, he's injured. Obviously, uh, Chapman's injured. So it does give us options with Payne and now Armstrong. Stuart Franklin said this. It looks as though the Payne deal will happen today. And I think we'll try and get the bell Deal over the line, and then I can see Tony going with that, unless someone else leaves. Meanwhile, Lewis uh, Lee Hilton said, "Unstoppable: Payne, Smallwood, Bennett, Armstrong, Dak, and Graham." That's his front six. Uh, as for Mark Fish, he said, "This Tony Mowbray ain't half recruiting well. How can you not get excited about being a Rovers fan right now?" Hashtag going up. Rovers tweet said this, get in, love that, Jack Payne will be a great addition. Meanwhile, Simon Kelly on Twitter said, Amari Bell now following Dak and Gladwin on Twitter. It might be reading between the lines there, but uh, could that be a signal? One thing I would say uh, will be tonight, actually, the, the, uh, the Leicester City Fleetwood Town FA Cup match. If Amari Bell's featuring in that game, I think there's still a long way to go before that transfer happens. If he's not featured whatsoever, not even on the bench, then I think it's a done deal and he's on his way this week. So uh, I'll have to take a look at the team's uh, team sheets later on tonight and see what's happening. Meanwhile, Matthew Lackey said this, we get Jack Payne and Amari Bell with Lenahan and Chapman still to return. What a force we are going to be this half of the season. Move aside, Shrewsbury and Wigan. The big boys are coming through. You blooming blues, I've been in tune. Now over the years, a number of players have played for both Fleetwood Town and Blackburn Rovers. I did cover three of them in the uh, home leg at Ewood Park. Now we're at uh, Highbury, so let's take a look at some other ones. Here's the first one, left back, Alan Wright. That's right, played for the blue and white halves. Here he is with a full set of hair. And there he is for Fleetwood Town with uh, some eyebrows. Some eyebrows, so uh, quality left back in his day. Obviously replaced by Graham Lasso uh, towards the championship, uh, the premiership winning days. Meanwhile, this guy uh, never really got a crack at Blackburn Rovers, uh, Alex Marrow. But he also played for Fleetwood Town. Like I said, I did mention three of the other guys earlier. But there was a whole list of players who have played for both Blackburn Rovers and Fleetwood Town. If you want to check it out, head over to my WordPress site. Uh, details are in the description below. It will show you all the names, uh, all the years and much, much more. Now, you've heard what I had to say about the match. You've even had a little comment yourself. But what does Cast the Cat think will happen this weekend between Fleetwood Town and Blackburn Rovers? That's pretty much all I've got for you today. Folks, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, 
make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'll keep you bang up to date with all Blackburn Rovers content. So it's getting to the nitty gritty part of the season. I'm hoping upon hope that this is the weekend that we get to second spot. Because I believe after that, the sky's the limit and we could go all the way to number one and the championship. Now, I've done a mid-season prediction video. If you haven't checked that out, that's also on my YouTube video, uh, YouTube channel. I also want to give a big shout out to the guys at the BRFCS forum. If you've not checked out the forum, make sure you do so. There's a link in my description below. Uh, there's also a logo. It's plastered on here somewhere. So, uh, yeah, it's a great opportunity for you to chat with fellow Rovers, talk about exciting transfers such as Jack Payne, Adam Armstrong, uh, and also, you know, dodgy rumours about Bradley Dak leaving, all that kind of stuff. It's all there, all in, in all glory. And you can also chat with fellow Rovers who live down the road or across the world in Thailand. We have a bit of a bit of a following out in Thailand. So I'm really excited at the moment. Blackburn Rovers are currently on the longest unbeaten run in England. Manchester City's bubble burst uh, at the weekend when they lost to Liverpool. So it's all Rovers now. How long can we go unbeaten? I'm hoping, obviously, uh, this weekend we can stay unbeaten. It's going to be a tough one. Uh, don't underestimate uh, Uwe Rosler and Fleetwood. They're a decent outfit. They uh, under the radar sort of side. They, they, you know, they did us, they did a number on us at Ewood Park. But can we do a number on them at their place? The next time you'll see me will be a review of the Fleetwood Town match, which will likely be Saturday evening or Sunday morning, depending wherever you are in the world. But until then, thumbs up, subscribe, chat for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.